Alright, so I'm going to look over this person's profile. Obviously, probably the only person that's going to be watching it is going to be you, so hello, Rabbity. Alright, so first off, just from looking at the builds, Blade of the Rune King is actually really bad on her. You don't really want to do anything that's on hit. Um, she's a little bit better with crit. Uh, Gale Force, I think, is good in the right matchup because it helps you know, dodge skill shots since she's not a very mobile ADC. And I feel like the movement speed increase is really good with the acceleration runes, but you're running healing, which doesn't really mesh too well with Gale Force. I guess Gale Force kind of helps with that movement speed increase and the dash to catch up with people if you want to run the healing instead of the movement speed increase to impaired targets. Let's see. Yeah, run the same thing. Um, yeah, uh, Kraken is best with her right now, especially if you're facing tanky champs. Followed by Phantom Dancer. Ruins if you're going to team fight a lot more is pretty useful. Uh, I like Phantom Dancer because it stacks, like, it's basically almost made for Ash. It stacks really well with her uh, Q. Um, also gives you Ghosting, which is really good for kiting and keeping up with people. And then you want to do Infinity's Edge next, and then Lord Dominic's, and then whatever else you need. Like I said, there's a high win rate with Blade of the Rune King. Like, you're not going to be terrible with it, but Infinity's Edge is going to out-damage Blade of the Rune King 100% of the time. Even if they're tanky, like I said, that's why you got Kraken. Your Q is pretty good for shredding. Can go Wit's Edge sometimes, if need be. But Crit Ash is a lot better right now. They kind of nerfed Gunsuos, which was a really good build on Ash, but they don't even have it on uh, Well, I guess it's not Mythic. Uh... Yeah, people don't even really build it too much. One person's built it within this patch. But yeah, it's not really good that much anymore. So a lot of people have just been running uh, straight crit. These are the runes that I prefer using, but there are other ones that you can go with. But the approach velocity, it gives you better movement speed towards people. So as soon as you auto attack somebody, you're going to be, you're going to apply your slow. So they're going to be slowed. So um, approach velocity basically is always going to be up. You're playing Ash just because of how her auto attacks work. Basically you want to W somebody if they're far away and then you can catch up with them with approach. Auto attack them to keep the slow on and then hopefully by that time uh, your Q will be up and then you just burst them down and kite if they try to counter attack. I feel like cut down and coup de gras it really just depends on the matchup. I forget what I use. I just use the same thing every time, so. Coupe de Gras. I don't know, I feel like cut down's pretty good. Presence of Mind is really good because Ash is really mana heavy. You never want to be out of mana for your Q and W. Let's see. I don't know, let's just go into this game, I guess. Alright, good damage. Right there, she'd been behind minions like I just talked about, but I guess he was auto attacking, he wasn't really queuing. Yeah, Lux should be out here harassing Israel. There she goes. That was good. Taking some damage from the Syndra though. You can't really commit with Ash too much uh, in the beginning because a lot of your. Well, not all of your damage, but a lot of your damage is going to come from your Q. So don't be afraid to not commit, if that makes sense. Like just because Lux lands something doesn't mean you have to, you know, do everything. Uh, it happens sometimes when you go from one game to another. You're fed one game and then you go back and you think that you're fed but you have to remember that you're level one and it's like two minutes in. <laughs> I probably would have done the same thing because I just I like being really aggressive on Ash. So getting the let's see. Getting that Q off 
So it's good that Israel is focusing you instead of CSing. That is a thing that a lot of challengers do. They will try to divert the attention of the ADC. Damn it, I hate it when it switches. Divert the attention of the ADC to the support so that they miss CS. Or they're not pushing as much because as support and ADC, you want to be pushing 100% of the time. It doesn't matter where the jungle is. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Like, you just want to push the minions to the tower because, one, they're going to lose gold if they lose it like minions to the tower. A lot of people, especially in low elo, can't see us under tower, although it's easy. <laughs> uh, they're, they just, they're not patient enough to do it or they don't want to track the tower shots, but that doesn't really matter. Okay, so you want to just keep pushing 24-7. Um, so this position where Singer is is really good. The singer has been playing well in this lane for since the game started. Um, Israel was hitting you instead of minions, which is fine, but you want to try to dodge or stay back. Just try to bait it. You can go in and out between minions, like come out, act like you're going to walk out, and then go back in. 99% of the time, the Israel is going to just automatically Q and waste mana, and then you won't get hit. So you'll stop him from pushing, you won't get hit, and you'll waste his mana. So that's three things all together. So this Lux, landing that is really good. Your follow-up was good, but you kind of tunnel vision because you forgot about the Syndra. Syndra's cooldowns are really short. I mean, Syndra support isn't uh, isn't really common. You have to also remember to keep track of cooldowns. Like, you're committing to this, but he still has his flash and his heal, so you're not going to get this kill. You're just as low as he is. So... Like I said, it's great that you followed up on this, but what you should have done is W'd and just went back to farming. Like, make him waste his potion, make him waste his heal, make him back off, make him stop pushing, stop farming. And then just regroup uh, with Lux in a safer, safer spot. Because now you had to blow your flash, he had to blow his flash, Sindra burned her, uh, her ignite. Which is great because then they won't have it for later. Dying this early isn't really too too big of a deal, but you don't really want to be this low at this low level. You want to try and get as much CS as possible and to deny as much CS as possible from the enemy ADC. Because that's how you're going to win is, is gold advantage. You don't really want to worry about kills too much right here. Lux is still kind of trying to harass the Israel, but that puts her in a bad position because you can't really follow up. So I don't really agree with this Lux's decision making. It made you blow your heal and then you ended up dying anyway, so... You wasted two summoners and you didn't need to. And that happens all the time, like, there's plenty of people that do it. I mean, I do it all the time, I'll panic flash. You gotta be careful. And just try to try to slow the battle down. Like, don't flash just because you can flash. Like, flash only if it's gonna save you 100%. That way, like, you flashing and healing is not gonna do anything. You're gonna die regardless. Like, it's great that you're trying to save yourself, but. And Israel just used his heal because she didn't realize that he still hadn't used his heal, which is another reason it's good to keep track of summoners. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. You don't want to waste summoners if you're going to end up dying anyway because you could need it for later. So they have just flash up. And if you would have been able to save your heal and flash, then that would have gave you the advantage in the next fight, if that makes any sense. Like, you want to... Even though you're at a disadvantage and you're going to die... You want to be able to have that advantage later on. So yeah, you died this time because you guys misstepped a little bit. Um, Syndra is really powerful early game and she doesn't have to worry about skill shots like Lux does. She can just kind of run through the minion tower or the minion waves. <laughs> minion tower. Um, she can just run through the minion waves and just harass you, especially if you're focused on um, hitting Israel and not really about dodging skill shots. But yeah, I guess that's more about gameplay, not really Ash. Uh, just uh, try to save your summoners for a good time. 
That way you can have the advantage and get it back, because dying this early is not really going to matter. Looks like you're CSing really good. 18 to his 11. Yeah, he's got three kills. But it's still early. Although he's going to come back with a sheen, which is really... Really gonna hurt. It's gonna lose all the CS to the tower though. Yeah, I would have W'd him when he came into range and then backed off a little bit. That was a good stun by Lux. This Lux isn't bad. I'm just saying I don't I don't know if this is a duo or or what, but um Lux isn't bad, it's just certain things that she could be doing better. Now you guys are at a level disadvantage. Uh, but basically with Ash, you want to kind of poke with your W whenever you can. Not too much because it, it, it does cost mana obviously. You want to be able to have that mana for the right time. Uh, but Ash is more of a level 2 champion, not really a level 1. Misfortune can kill people at level 1, Ezreal can kill people at level 1. Lucian can kill people at level 1. Um, I guess that's another good point too. Let's see what this grave does. There you go. You got your Q up. Moxus needs to run. Perfect. See how he was focused on that? Like, he could have just ran. He didn't need to... <laughs> he didn't need to chase Lux. Another good thing too about pushing and having the enemy ADC uh, harass you in the beginning. Like I said, you don't need to commit, but it's best to try to hurry up and get your level 2 as soon as possible. But the thing with Ash is that you can't really capitalize on your level 2 as soon as you hit. So you want to try and poke him down your autos and your W, get level 2, and then sort of try to stack up your Q. Because Israel, he can just automatically EQ as soon as he hits level 2, but with Ash, you're going to take a couple seconds to stack your Q up. So it's not something that you can nearly do instantly. It's definitely good that you don't have your Hawk Shot a point in that. I normally do that at level 7, especially if I'm not getting too much, much issues from the jungler. If, they're, if it's a jungle that you know is going to gank you a lot, or if you want to be able to keep track, I'd get it at level 3, but... Definitely better to, uh not really get it until after your alt. Boots and attack speeds fine, especially since I think that is all that you can get. Um, going refillable potions, great. Your CSing is good. I really just think it's about being more patient at, at level 1. You gotta kind of understand Ash's strengths plus her weaknesses. Especially with who you're facing. Like, Ash isn't going to be able to outdamage a Syndra in Israel at level 1. That's just unfortunately not going to happen. This is another thing I was going to say about the Israel. Being a hard matchup is he can flash or E. I hate it when it just switches. Um, he can flash or E out of your alt. So you have to wait, especially with the Lux. Um, you have to wait and make sure that he's stunned before you you alt. They have increased the speed at which it travels and you would think that it would be easy. Honestly, I feel like that should have hit him. Like the, <laughs> the arrow was already past where his... Well, that's kind of bullshit. The arrow was like already past <laughs> where he flashed at. But yeah, uh, if you're facing a mobile champion like Israel, you really gotta wait for your... I'm curious. Or maybe it was just leftover debris from his E. Yeah, see that should have stunned him right there. <laughs> Bullshit, right? I don't know, I guess the hitbox for the arrow is kinda towards the middle rather than at the tip. But anyway, for mobile champions like Israel and Lucian, you really have to keep track of summoners. If you're, I know you're probably not new to it, but if you're bad at it like me, I try to, alright, pause. I try to go based off of my flash, like if you guys both flashed at the same time, 
So if you have your flash up, he's also going to have your flash up. It's his flash up. Uh, also, facing um, people like Caitlyn, Israel, anybody with linear skill shots, this is a really bad spot to be in because you can only go one way. You can only go this way. So when you're facing somebody like this, you want to fight him over here like where Lux is. You're running into this and... Do you have a ward there? Well, I guess they're attacking you so you can see. Alright, so you're running into this. You don't have any... You don't have any uh, wards or anything. Your alt's wasted. Unfortunately, with Ash, if you... Not wasted. I mean, it was a good alt. I would have alted there too. Like I said, it's just about keeping track of summoners. If you miss your alt... Just, just back off, unfortunately. Ash isn't really a powerhouse like MF or like Lucian or Israel. She doesn't really have too much, so she's going to rely heavily on her support. If you don't get that stun off in the right way, you don't really have anything to go off of. Like, you can slow them, but you, you don't have anything right now to kind of counterattack. Especially since you don't have any damage, you went more mobile, um, which is good versus skill shot champions because it makes it a little bit easier. If you're behind or if that's all you can get going berserk greaves isn't really too bad but you have to remember that you don't have the damage kind of to follow up with it so you want to try to go with your jungle or with your support but like i said if you miss any everything and or if it doesn't land or um if you're not in a good position don't be afraid to just back off like just w and kite away like they can't really chase you even get off like a an auto attack just to slow them but again that's more it's more like general EDC advice rather than about Ash's playstyle so let me see if I can now if that alt did land then Lux would have been able to easily follow it up with her E and her Q and been able to probably help kill him. Saw his heal. Lux has exhaust. I don't know if she had it last fight or not. I was not expecting him to just run in there like that. Right, so Israel is disrespecting the hell out of you right now. And you have your alt, which is great. Alt W. Kite with your Q. I guess you have the attack speed for it. Um, don't be afraid just to stand still. And, uh, just Q them in the face. Like, they're not gonna go anywhere. Sidestepping or kiting or however you want to call it when you don't have enough attack speed it can actually slow up your attack more than it's going to help unless you're really good at like automation canceling so so that was a really good really good alt he wasn't really able to react because it was <laughs> literally point blank and he did the biggest mistake that any Israel player does if you ever play Israel, never E to engage. Um, use it to reposition or disengage only. Or if you're going to finish somebody off and you know it, but you never want to. That was his mistake. He E'd right into you, which gave you a free... Gave you a free alt. I mean, the sidestepping is great because you can... You can dodge his, his cues a little bit better and keeps your movement going so he doesn't really know. The dodging here, you did really well. I haven't been keeping track of where Ward's been placed, but... 
Um, don't forget to use your hawk shot. That's what I like using. Unless you just got it. Did you just get level 7 off that kill? Yeah, you did just get level 7 off that kill. I guess it's a good reason to have it. Is, um, to be able to see into bushes when people are fighting. Like I said, you just got it at level 7, which is... The best thing to do. You haven't really needed it up until this point. So yeah, that was really good. You can... You can 1v1 Israel as long as you... Are able to get the stun off and um, able to dodge most of his skill shots. But if you're a bad player or if Israel is a good player, it's kind of hard to kind of hard to do. Ash cannot damage because she is a more consistent consistent damage. <laughs> the BM. Um, she has a more consistent damage than Israel. He can auto attack, but not as fast as Ash. Unless he has his stuff fully stacked, which he didn't, because like I said, he just kind of came in and eat straight at you without any game plan or anything. He just figured because he was so ahead that um, he'd be able to kill you, but he's died three times. You guys are... You actually got a level up on him because your CSing is a lot better than his. Um, so that's good. Aww. That's unfortunate. So this game you lost. I wonder why. Um, that was unfortunate. At least Lux was able to finish him off. It's always good to um, focus the ADC, but if there is a carry support, like Syndra or Lux or Zyrath or anybody like that, it's not really the worst thing in the world to focus them if they're out of position. Mostly because they're going to do just as much damage as the ADC does, like if you're facing a Soraka. Well, I guess you should focus the rocket anyway because of her healing. If you're facing a Sona, you don't really want to because, I mean, by the time you kill her, the ADC is going to kill you. But by the time you kill the ADC, Sindra is going to kill you. So, when they were separated, Sindra being the one with the least mobility, it wouldn't have been a bad thing to target her too. That's kind of how you want to focus your alting, is whoever is stunned and you know you're going to have, you're going to be able to hit it. Anyone who's caught off guard because you know, like you can see them um, with either your hawk shot or uh, your ward placement. Or anyone who's not mobile, like you know that their flash is down and you know that they're not going to be able to dodge it in time. So I think focusing Syndra there wouldn't, wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. Especially since you're really good at dodging, you'd be able to kind of stay away from Israel. Also, I haven't been checking the spells, but you want to make sure that you only alt when you have your Q stacked. The worst thing you can do is alt somebody, and then you have no follow-up damage. W stacks Q, obviously auto attack stack Q. Um, the more people you hit with your W, the more stacks you're going to get. So if you can hit minions and champions at the same time, try to do that and it'll instantly stack your Q. Mox just caught up a little bit. Not going to be able to do too much with that follow up, especially with goddamn Udyr. Yeah, if you would have your alt here, and saved it. I think you may have been able to get a kill here. So I'd try to hold on to it unless you need it. Just because you can use it doesn't mean you should. You definitely probably would have been able to get a, a kill. Well not probably, definitely, but I think you would have been able to do something there. 
especially with him going in. You know he's been aggressive all game. But your Q usage isn't isn't bad. Like I said I prefer approach velocity because you're able to stick to people a little bit more. So you want to poke them down, and then when they're out of position, slow them and then chase and get the kill. Also, using your W or your auto attacks to be able to get your alt off because they're slowed um, is also a good. Oh, get this double. Aw. That's fine. I thought for sure that all was going to kill both of them. But yeah, you want to use your. You want to use your kit to be able to get your alt off, just like any other champ, like slow them and then alt. Don't alt without them being impaired in any way. But I think I've said that like 12 times already. It isn't bad. Um, I would have went longbow here uh, because they have three burst champions. I don't know if you want to count Aatrox as a burst champion, but they have three burst champions. So going um, longbow would have been best. Obviously, I think this game's about to be a forfeit, maybe? But Longbow would be good um, to help with surviving the burst and being able to um, heal back some of that poke damage uh, because of the... because of the lifesteal. I mean, you didn't do too bad in lane, it was really the rest of your team that kind of fed. and lost this game for you. I know it's probably hard to uh, deal with that, but you guys didn't do too bad bot lane. There's just a little mistakes here and there. Like I said just being too aggressive in the beginning. Wasting stuff here and there. Well not waste I don't I don't like using the word wasting. I don't I don't know any other word that would be used for it. Like just make sure you use your cooldowns at the right time. Make sure you I mean Ash's arrow is on a really short cooldown which makes you want to spam it a little bit more but in those key moments when you actually need it is when you want to have it like I said you don't want to use something just because you can use it you kind of want to use it like when you need it that's probably the biggest just tip I can give I sound like you're doing fine with like I said kiting <laughs> I just read your message you're pretty good with the kiting and the dodging you can poke with your auto attacks um, just to slow them so you get one or two down so basically like when they're going for a minion you want to either poke with your W or with your auto attack if you can poke them with your auto attack do that because you're able to get one or two more autos off from just that one auto because it'll slow and they'll automatically depend on who you face I guess but most people are going to automatically start running but they're going to be slowed, so you get one or two free more autos off, and then if they do turn around to get you, then you can run away, and they can't really counter, because they're slowed, and you still, <laughs> you're still normal speed. So basically, you can cue them, or, sorry, <laughs> you can, I was thinking of something else. You can auto them, and then poke them down a little bit more, and then you can either choose to come back, or, like, keep going. It, it just depends on the situation. W, like I said, you can use the spam. You don't want to do it too, too much because it does cost mana and you want to be able to have it when you need it. It's good for catching people, like if they're running away. See my ash. It's good for catching people if they're running. Oh shit, I can't replay it. It's good for catching people if they're running away because your W obviously is a longer range than your Q. I like running Ghost for melee champs probably not the best thing to do but some people are doing it as like kind of a troll build like I said I would try approach velocity just to see how you like it or if that helps if you like to be really aggressive in lane um biscuits is also great because you can spam your w a little bit more um it also helps if you have to stay back if you're against like a poke comp like that Israel Syndra you don't really want to be in the thick of it too much with Ash because like I said she doesn't have any escape other than slow you can take ghosts, you can flash, um, or you can rely on your support, which sometimes isn't 
all three of those sometimes aren't really good like your flash is going to be down your ghost is going to be down your support's not going to be there so you want to be able to stay back kind of out of want to stay back in a good position that way you're able to stay in lane and not get forced out of it so biscuits is really good especially like i said if you're losing health and mana <sighs> a lot of talking. Your E, I use it to keep track of jungle camps for my jungler. Uh, if you use your E, you always want to, unless you're doing like Baron or Drag, because it, where it stops, it's going to give you a longer duration of vision. But if you shoot your E, you always want to do it all the way across the map, because there's no range on your E, so you don't want to shoot just to one spot to try to get stuff so i try to shoot it like i said over jungle timers if you get vision on those even if you're not in the area obviously it's still going to give you the jungle timer for your your jungler so he knows like hey this guy's red's about to be up or this guy's red's down blah 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 like you can help give people advantage or like if your top's over pushing i like to shoot my e over there just to say hey idiot the jungler's over there this is where he is if you choose to back off great if not whatever yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how long this has been going on. 41 minutes. No one's going to watch this for 41 minutes. But if you choose to, great. If not, that's that's fine too. Just to give a little information. I guess this helps for Ash players, not not just one. But that's my take on Ash. So I haven't played her too much lately. I've been playing some other champs when I ADC. But I feel like the new attack speed buffs on her is really good. It's been pretty fun, especially with this ghost setup. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed it. But yeah, that's a little in-depth look at Ash, I guess. Hopefully, hopefully it helps.